Mon français n'est pas assez bon pour ça. That was worse. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is. Why did I think this was a good idea? Mon français n'est pas assez bon pour ça. <laughs> <laughs> this is so hard. Salut à tous! La vidéo d'aujourd'hui sera en français. <laughs> non, je plaisante. Mon français n'est pas assez bon pour ça. <laughs> well, that took longer than I wanted it to. First things first, ignore the sign in the background. It still has my August book haul thing on it because I went to change it and I realized I can't do shit with these nails so deal with it. Today is the end of well I don't know when this is going out but the Grand Mall read along that I was hosting with Aurelie at Knit and Read has ended. We read that book throughout the whole of September and I had a great time. I've lost the fucking book. Oh there they are. I'm having a day that is fine. We're pushing on. Oh, I can't pick the fucking book up. <laughs> My damn nails. <gasps> Guys. Oh. So this read along came about because I hauled Le Grand Mon by Alain Fournier a few months back. I picked this up in a charity shop because it's in French. This is a French edition. It is written en français and I was like, I don't know what it's about but maybe I'll give it a try I'll try and read it in French and then Aurelie was like oh my god I just recently found the book I read when I was a kid like 14 years ago or something um I'd be wanting to reread it because I think she read it for school so she was like I want to read it as an adult and all that why don't we do like a buddy read read along and I was like that sounds great <laughs> so originally I was going to try and read this in French then read it in English to see how much I picked up um in the end I read the first page in French and I was kind of grasping it but I was a bit like I'm not sure what's going on. So I started reading it in English just to see how much I'd got and before I knew it, before, before I knew it, wait wait I need to read the English copy. I don't know how to booktube anymore. What the f oh my gosh. This is my English copy which is blank. In the English it's called The Lost Estate because the Grand Mon, it's like the Great Gatsby. So it's like the Great and then his surname is M I thought it was Moln but it's more pronounced Moln so like anyway you don't care <laughs> but they named it the lost estate because it's about this like house thing that Moln finds I'll get into that in a minute so yeah I picked it up in English and before I knew it I'd like read two or three chapters or something like that so I just kept reading it in English um, which I think was for the best because with this being a classic it's from no the guy died in the war First World War, I think. This is from like, this is from the early 1900s. So it's a classic and I don't think reading a classic would be a great idea, like in a different language at this point in my language learning. My language is not very good. I can barely speak English. So side note, if anyone has any books in French, not translations, I'd, pref I'd prefer it to be a book that was written in French that's more modern, contemporary, kids books, YA, please send them my way, that way I can try and pick them up and hopefully start reading in French. Bonus points if it's not actually translated into English because then I have to read it in French <laughs> but equally if it is in English that's good because then I can double check. I have Harry Potter, I could just read that in French but you know I want to be difficult. <laughs> anyway, this book, can I put it somewhere? Will we just cover all the shit that I haven't cleared up? <laughs> I literally, in my bookshop workshop, told the kids like, get yourself a nice background, don't have like rubbish and laundry showing everywhere. And I just have like fucking coins, chewing gum, all that sitting there. Don't follow my own advice. Le Grand Monet, I can't even pronounce it anymore. Le Grand Mon. The Lost Estate is about Mon, Augustine, August, August, Augustine. I can't say. I want to say Augustine, but it's more like Augustine. But he's not got any on the end, so it's Augustine. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's about Mon, who, he, well, actually, it's about him, but it's from the perspective of Francois. Oh my God! I read this book. I only finished this book like a week ago. Why? Why is this so difficult for me? Anyway. We follow, we don't follow, I can't, I can't, 
This is a struggle, guys. Bear with me. Our narrator is this but I don't think he's a young boy, he's more an adult looking back on his life. His dad was a teacher at this like school so he grew up there and he's at the school and then this new boy comes um, and he kind of becomes like the popular boy but then he goes away, like he doesn't go missing but like he, like because like they kind of know what's going on, he basically he goes away, he disappears for like three days and when he comes back he's got this story of this like amazing house that he went to and like this stuff was going on and he's kind of fascinated by it. There's a girl that he met that he's like fixated on and stuff and it becomes this mission for him to like find it again but the other kids have kind of grown a bit bored of Moan and then this gypsy and his friend appear and they have all this cool stuff that the kids prefer so Moan and Francois kind of become closer friends during this time and they try and find the estate again and it's kind of like a coming of age story because it does then progress through their lives and like how when even when they grow up this event still plays a big part in their lives and it was just a really fun kind of story. I thought it would be a little bit more mysterious but actually when when we're being told the story when in the chronological like order of it we get to a point of the story of Francois telling us where at the time he didn't know what happened at this house but he found out later on but instead of making it a mystery for us he just tells us which I quite liked you know as much as I love a good mystery I quite liked being told like what had happened and then getting the story after that this makes no sense even to me so if anyone is following along good on you. <laughs> it's a very hard book to describe. There's something so magical about it and I mean it, it's not got any magic in it, it just it's just a magical book. I feel like we have to elaborate that because the word magic is so synonymous with like wizards and shit so I've got to be like no I mean like just it's magic, it's great, it's wonderful. It was very kind of mesmerizing and like wistful if that's the word to use. Um, I think what kind of added to that sort of magic kind of mysterious whimsical whimsical did I say that what did I say <coughs> I said wistful right <coughs> oh my god now I'm dying I think what added to the sort of whimsical aspect is that this is Alan Fournier's only novel he dies in like the first month of the first world war um so we never got any more books from him and I think he could have written some absolutely wonderful stories. He has such an amazing way of storytelling and I, I know it's kind of hard for me to say that when I'm reading a translation because you can never fully capture the writing of and the words in different languages but the essence of it was just gorgeous and it was strange because it took me about three weeks to get through this book I, I mean I was still kind of in a slump um but I just I just loved it so much and it's funny because like I think Orly and I were the only two people who even read this book for the read along which it's fine it was more a buddy read but we wanted to do these videos and open up the read along to everyone just because we want to share this book. Orly having read it before obviously knew what group, like magic it had. I don't even know if she enjoyed it, like I know she enjoyed it but like I don't know her thoughts as of filming this fully. This is a book that I, I'm not like oh my gosh I love this I'm gonna be raving about it for the rest of my life but it's one of those books that it's kind of got a place in my heart where I just feel like there's something about it that makes me so glad to have read it. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it's like the first piece of French classic literature I've read aside from Les Miserables. I I don't know. I But I definitely think when people say to me, you know, do you have classics to recommend? I will be pushing that to them because I feel like with classics a lot of the issues is, is we're kind of thrown into reading the classic classics so everyone's like read Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, uh, Jane Eyre, Emma, Wuthering Heights, 
Oliver Twist, Les Miserables, War and Peace, Three Musketeers, you know, there's, there's these classics that it's like the staples. And um, people kind of forget about the other ones. Do you know, like they're classics of that period, but they're not hyped up, they're not mainstream. And I'm not saying that the hyped up ones aren't good, but like, I don't know, I just, I don't have the notion to like pick up things like Pride and Prejudice at this point because I'm like, I feel like, I don't really know the story, but like, I know the story, if you know what I mean. And I'm just like, there's so many books out there. I just, I, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Just the fact that that's his only book. It's like a Harper Lee, except we're not gonna find an original manuscript at this point <laughs> to like, rehash. Yeah, I don't know. The cat is snoring, you won't hear him, but he's disturbing me because he's so cute. I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you ask someone, oh, can you recommend me a classic to read? They're like, have you read this? Have you read this? And you're like, oh my God, like, I could have Googled, you know, classic books to read and I'd have been listed all 100 of those super popular classics. So like, I love that I have read this and I can now give somebody a book they've probably never heard of to recommend. And it's different, you know, it's not, I mean, it has romance in it, but it's not the sort of classic literature that's all about this, you know, young woman who's finding her true love and, do you know, like, that's great. And I understand why those were really popular at the time, you know, all those, like, upper class, you know, young women, debutantes in society, you know, sitting and reading about finding their Mr. Darcy and all this because that was kind of what they were aiming for at that point, you know, they were just looking on to marry another rich dude and continue lineage and shit. So like, that's why those were super appealing, but to me it's like, give me some girl power. And I'm not saying that they didn't have it and then I know there were some badass women in like the Victorians and all of that stuff, like fucking George Eliot, like you go on, you, you write under that pseudonym and make everyone look, like to this day, I remember being a bookseller and people, like, you would get the most pretentious men, the misogynistic patriarchy lovers, who would be like, yes, I only read literature by men. And then they want, like, the entire George Eliot collection because it's, he's their favourite author. And I'm sitting there like, bitch, <laughs> George Eliot had a vagina. <laughs> just saying. But yeah, like, I don't know. It was just nice to kind of have a different type of classic. I think I like classics from a male perspective because I really, really liked Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And although they're completely different vibes, I get the same kind of feeling towards it. I love Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde like loads, but because it's both like the male perspective and it's not really about like romancy stuff. And Les Mis has a lot of romance, but it's predominantly male point of views. So maybe that's my key to reading classics. <laughs> I'm saying that I haven't tried to read any like Jane Austen or the Brontes so like I am judging them without having given them a go. I will probably end up being one of those you know those readers that like just become those girls that be this particular girls that become obsessed with the Brontes and Austen. That's probably gonna end up being me when I finally read them. I'm either gonna hate them or love them let's be real. Anyway this has became a complete ramble about classics. This video's main point was just to kind of wrap up the Grand Moon, The Lost Estate. This is probably the best kind of review you're gonna get from me. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up because this video is gonna be like too long already because I just ramble, but please, if you get the chance, if you spot the book out in the wild in a charity shop really cheap or something, give it a go and let me know your thoughts. I am rambling. I haven't filmed in like two weeks. I'm basking in it. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up. Thank you guys. That sounds so fake. Like, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you for watching, especially if you're at this point because god almighty, I'd have unsubscribed me. If you haven't, thanks. If you've actually just came to my channel from this video and you're like, I want to subscribe to you. Like, I promise my other content is so much better. So like, you're in for a treat. It can only go better from here, she says, she says. I'm gonna go and I will see you guys in my next video. Au revoir! <laughs> Mon français n'est pas assez bon ça. Bon pour ça! Merde! I give up. En anglais. <laughs>
Je suis écossaise, je parle anglais, mon français, je parle un peu français. <laughs>